Hi there, this is Maggie Sampson from Esri Canada's Technical Support, and today we are going to take a look at the ArcGIS Pro Geoprocessing Tool, Build Balance Zones. Build Balance Zones is a geoprocessing tool that was released with ArcGIS Pro 2.4 and is part of the Spatial Statistics Toolbox. The Build Balance Zones tool uses a genetic growth algorithm to create spatially contiguous zones in your study area based on the criteria that you specify. This tool is available to users at all license levels and does not require any additional extensions. There is one parameter, the distance to consider parameter, that is only available with ArcGIS Desktop Advanced licensing. Today we'll be working with data from the City of Hamilton to get an idea of how this tool could be used. Let's imagine that I am an employee of Hamilton's Public School Board and I have been tasked with reevaluating the school catchments for high schools in the city. As you can see here, I have a map set up in ArcGIS Pro that shows the different neighborhoods in Hamilton, as well as the locations of all existing public schools. The neighborhood data also contains attributes that I have set up to show which of the neighborhoods has a public high school and which of them does not, as well as the population under 19 for each of those areas. But this is going to be something that we consider because the people under 19 are the ones who are either currently attending high school or who will be attending in the future. And we want to have those numbers roughly equal across each of our different school zones. In order to find these new school areas, we're going to be using the Build Balance Zones tool, which you can find by searching in your geoprocessing tools. For our input feature, we're going to select our Hamilton neighborhoods, as this is the feature that has the attributes we want to use to find those new areas. Then we're going to choose an output location and name. I'm calling it New School Zones. We're also going to use the attribute target, meaning that we're going to be looking at specific attributes and trying to have specific values to design our zones. The variables that I'm considering are the number of schools, which we will set to one per zone, and the population under 19, which we're going to put as about 9,000 per zone, which is roughly the total population under 19 in Hamilton divided by 12 for each of the different school zones. We're also going to change this weight for this variable to 0 0.5, as although we are concerned with having the same number of students per zone, we're more concerned with having one school per zone. And we want to make sure that that is definitely considered when making the zones as the most important factor. So the spatial constraint that we're going to use is uh, contiguity edges only. What this means is that we're only going to have areas that are connected by a direct edge. So for example, we will have these two neighborhoods potentially connected. But we won't have this neighborhood connected to this neighborhood unless it's also connected to one beside it. That just makes more sense for people who are trying to go to schools that are actually in their neighborhood or close to where they live. And then finally, we're going to add an additional zone selection criteria, which is compactness. What this means is it's going to give us the most compact areas possible when considering the different outputs. This is ideal for school zones, as the students likely will be walking or taking transit to school, and we want to make sure that they have easy access or as easy as possible access to their school by having a smaller area that they have to travel. There are a number of other variables and, and attributes that you can choose to use in this tool, although these are the only ones we're going to be using today in the demo. If you're using the tool and you're con confused about what maybe an attribute means, there are these icons next to majority of the attributes that you can select and take a look at what they mean. And there's also the help documentation which can be found by clicking on this question mark and that I'll also link in the description for this video. Once you're satisfied with the parameters like I am now, we're going to go ahead and click run. This is going to generate an output which is automatically added to the map and here you can see we have 12 different school zones, one for each of the schools that is added to the map. Along with the school zones we also have these two tables that are created, these two charts, and if we open them up we can see that there's one student in each school zone and that we have the population for each zone. As you can see it's roughly the same for each of the areas, although there is this one zone that does have a higher population than the others. 
If you're unsatisfied with the results of the tool for the for this run because you don't feel that the variables are exactly what you want to see, you can always reconfigure them or leave them the same and run the tool again. As it uses a genetic growth algorithm, you're going to see slightly different results each time you run the tool as it's going to be taking a different sample. So if you'd like to see a different result, you can always run again and compare. On my map, I do also have the actual school boundaries for the city of Hamilton. You can see them here. You can see that although they are different from the results that we got with the tool, they have some areas of similarity and it also shows you how you might be able to use this tool to create different boundaries if you're having t areas that aren't working effectively for your needs at the moment. Thank you for listening and hopefully you'll have an opportunity to use the Build Balance Zones tools in your workflow. Have a great day.